During this lecture, we'll be talking about synonymous versus non-synonymous mutations. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about mutations in general and make our way to our point. First of all, we have to know that mutations, uh, a mutation in essence, it is a process that can change the allele frequency. It is done by inducing changes in the genetic structure, the change of nucleotides uh, of an organism, uh, simply converting one allele into another. Now, the rate at which mutations arise is extremely low. However, it varies between loci and species, so it is definitely not constant between uh, any of these two parameters. Now, most uh, environmental conditions can increase the number of mutations, and these include the chemicals, radiation, infectious agents, etc. Now, this is extremely important, and that's why they tell us that even if, for example, we spill a certain chemical on our body, this might not be harmful in the earth and the and the. Uh, immediate effect but it can have some drastic changes just like we uh, we know when we have uh, multiple x-rays uh, consecutively this is going to be causing inducing cancer how does that happen simply by increasing the likelihood of mutations to be occurring within our body therefore this is how um, well cancer cells arise so these mutations can be extremely slow or incred or rather fast relatively faster if they were induced by certain agents. Now we have to stress that mutations are crucial because they are the source of new genetic material by a new, a new genetic material. Now recombinations actually um, further helps mutations in order to get uh, these, um, these changes uh, cemented in our body. Now I'd like to add a little bit to this uh, area because mutations just like we mentioned before can be rather detrimental to a person or an organism because it might cause for example cancer cells or the formation of tumor cells etc. However they can be sometimes good in order to change or to vary the genetic uh, makeup of a certain organism and just like we mentioned in a previous video where the genetic variation is sometimes critical in order for the survival of a certain uh, species. Now, the probability of a mutation occurring depends on two major things. First of all, the error occurring and uh, the error occurring in the first place, like for example, the plug-in of a, a nucleotide that is not correct, and the fact that this does not get repaired. Because I mean, obviously, some we have DNA polymerase that has a three prime, five prime exonuclease activity, which uh, which has a main role in uh, basically correcting these uh, incorrect additions of nucleotides. So, in case an error happens and it is not repaired, this is when the problem arises. Now, the two different types of mutations are as follows. We've got the synonymous mutations, which uh, are basically changes in a gene sequence. And specifically here, we're talking about a coding region, because if it was a non-coding region, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't actually make any difference. And a change in a gene sequence that does not alter the produced amino acid. I mean, obviously, we know that there are many amino acids that actually very, the vast majority of amino acids have more than one uh, coding, um, it has. They have more than one uh, codons that code for the same protein. So even if one amino acid or one uh, nucleotide change, the produced amino acid might not uh, might not differ. And by the way, uh, if you are interested in um, the codon. Uh, alteration or the different types of codons for one particular amino acid there is a video that is on this channel called a codon usage I highly recommend it moving on for non synonymous mutations it uh, s simply entails the, ch the fact that a change in a gene sequence and specifically also a coding region it uh, it alters the produced amino acid so let's look at the image to the left of the screen right now we've got synonymous substitutions where the leucine is we're going to be having a change in the third in the third nucleotide the adenine is going to be changing to guanine however the leucine is going to be coded is actually coded by both of these codons therefore the protein has not been altered or the amino acid has not been altered and uh, same thing goes for threonine the ACU uh, it is also uh, the ACA is al also codes the threonine therefore the same thing happened however looking at the non-synonymous substitutions we've got the leucine which is coded for by the codon UUA uh, we've got phenylalanine which is coded by the UUC so simply changing the A or the adenine to the cytosine uh, we are going to be seeing a, a difference in the amino acids which is go going to be later altering the entire uh, protein that this phenylalanine is going to be a part of. So there is another problem that is that might be even much worse, which is the tryptophan, which is UG, uh, coded by UGG. 
we've, we already know that UGA is a stop codon. So the G at the end of the um, at the end of the codon of the tryptophan could change to A, and this is going to be causing the stop of the translation, which also could be detrimental for a certain protein.